First at four, there are new developments in a high-profile murder case out of the low country. What police are saying about another arrest in the case. And crime in Savannah, the numbers are down, but a string of recent shootings show more work needs to be done to make communities safer. Mayor Van Johnson weighing in on that today. Plus, an effort is underway to keep hotels out of some downtown Savannah neighborhoods. We'll explain. It's 4 o'clock on WSAV on your side. Now, WSAV presents First News at 4. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Edward Moody. And I'm Tina Taya Shaw. Thank you for joining us. Our top story today, new developments in a murder case that stunned the town of Bluffton. An 18-year-old DJ Fields Jr., a popular high school football player, is shot and killed as he drives down a roadway. It happened in 2021, but information revealed today means that a final chapter in this case could be soon. Right now, two people are behind bars charged in connection with the crime, but today investigators revealed that a third person was allegedly involved. News 3's Andrew Davis has been following this story from the beginning. He has details on the latest developments. Right here along Bluffton Parkway more than two years ago, DJ Fields was shot and killed while he was driving down the road. A case of mistaken identity. Tonight, a third person behind bars, a teenager at the time, but one of the people who may have fired those deadly shots. Solicitor Duffy Stone making the announcement surrounded by law enforcement from Buford and Jasper counties, as well as Bluffton Police and the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. A young man, now 18, only 15 when the shooting happened, now in the hands of the juvenile justice system. Details were scarce during this newser, but we do know that the teen was in the car with Jimmy Green and Ty Cheneyfield the night of the murder and was one of the people who opened fire on Field's car. It turned out the bullets were intended for someone else, but they found DJ instead, killing him. While it took more than two years to make this final arrest in the case, everyone involved says it was important to close this chapter. This was an investigation that started uh, at the time of the crime and has continued and has never slacked up. And the people behind me have been dedicated to bring the right answer before us, no matter how long it took. It means everything to me to know that it won't bring our son back, but it'll take somebody, you know, dangerous off the streets, you know, for possibly hurting somebody else. The case against that now 18 year old is headed to family court. Their hope is that it will be pushed up into circuit court so he can stand trial as an adult. His name would be released and he could potentially serve life in prison. Andrew Davis, WSCV News 3 on your side. And we have been following this story from day one to see a timeline as well as hear from family members. Go to WSAV.com slash DJ Fields. Now, WSAV News 3 on your side weather with Storm Team 3 Viper Radar, powered by the Dozier Law Firm. Well, for a Thursday afternoon, we have been enjoying a lot of sunshine, but now some cumulus clouds are starting to develop across the region. And as they start the tower and billow up, we will start to see some thunderstorms developing. Here's the view from our Savannah, Savannah cam looking toward downtown. You can see that mix of clouds and sunshine. Not too active right now on Viper radar, but we are still seeing that possibility for a few of those showers and storms, but the main story so far has been the heat for us this afternoon. 93 degrees is the current temperature here in Savannah, 97 for Darien and Jessup, lower 90s for the cooler locations, 86 though for Hilton Head benefiting from the sea breeze coming on shore, but it is feeling a bit hotter. The heat index temperatures, despite those, high, those current temperatures being in the middle and upper 90s, not too out of control for most of us, over 105 for a few locations, 108 is how it feels for Darien, 97 degrees is how it feels in Richmond Hill and for Savannah. Now Viper radar, despite that cloud cover, it is kind of quiet out there at the moment in the low country into Jasper County. We do have a small cell that's developed along 170 drifting from Chatham County over the river, also into Beaufort County, a little bit of activity near Bluffton, and further to the south into McIntosh County. Once again, seeing some showers developing for us. We had a lot of heavy rain yesterday where some locations near Darien uh, received at least based upon radar estimates up 
to about five inches of rain yesterday just because the storm just kept developing over the same spots and we do keep some shower and thunderstorm chances in the forecast for the next few hours as we head into the overnight. Things will be partly cloudy and cooling off into the lower 80s by 11 with overnight lows in the lower to middle 70s for most of us. Still a very warm stretch of weather for us heading into the next several days. As far as those rain chances, they will be lower for Friday. Things changing in that department, that part of the forecast, then a little bit more unsettled as we head into Saturday and beyond, but not too out of control. But unfortunately, because of those slightly lower rain chances, it looks like those temperatures will be a little hotter than originally anticipated in our forecast. The cooler days will just be in the lower 90s, 93 degrees by next Tuesday, but a few opportunities to make it into the mid and upper 90s for us in our area. So hour by hour throughout Friday, we will start the day on the drier side with a mix of clouds and sunshine through the morning hours. And then as we head into the afternoon, when we get to those peak heating hours, that's when we'll start to see some of those showers and storms begin to develop across our area, and that will continue into the evening hours. So definitely keep an eye of the sky if you do have any outdoor plans for tonight. Few isolated showers or storms with us early on with those temperatures cooling off into the lower 70s for the cool spots near 80 degrees right along the coast. And then for tomorrow afternoon for Friday, mix of sun and clouds with scattered showers and storms. We'll have a nice breeze out of the west and southwest, 5 to 10 miles per hour. High temperatures though in the middle 90s. For the boaters, we'll have a light breeze out there, 5 to 15 knots, seas just two feet. So over Overall, not too bad. Just be aware of the thunderstorm chances in the later part of the day. But overall, a mix of clouds and sunshine with scattered showers and storms each day of the next seven days. That's your forecast for now. Another update soon. All right, Scott, thank you. We have a new numbers in today on Savannah's homicide rate. It's still much lower than years past, but gun violence is starting to creep up. WSAV's Joseph Leonard spoke to the mayor today about why that is and what the city is doing to try and keep Savannians safe. He is joining us now to explain. Joseph. As the temperature rises outside, violent crime heats up too. There have been several deadly shootings over the last two weeks, but homicides are still lower than they were last year. Now, so far this year, four people have been killed in Savannah. Three of those people were shot in the past four weeks, according to the Savannah Police Department. However, even after this recent rise in deadly shootings, homicides are still down by 76% compared to last year. I've been predicting this, um, unfortunately, that we knew we would have an uptick during the summer. We knew that. We know people are out. We know it's hot. We know tempers are short. We know that the availability of guns are all over the place and we know that that's how people will choose to settle their disputes. And coming up at five, we'll tell you why the mayor thinks the homicide rate has reduced so much and also the steps the city is taking to review to reduce violent crime and get guns off the streets. Joseph Leonard, WSAV News 3 on your side. Thank you, Joseph. Happening tonight, a vigil to honor six people killed in Culleton County. It will be held at 7 p.m. at Ace Basin Park. That's off Green Pond Highway. There will be a balloon release in honor of the victims. The community is invited to attend. Now, police say the victims were killed by Ryan Manigo on Monday. As of now, he is charged with two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. However, we're told more charges may be filed after autopsies are performed. Investigators say Manigo stabbed the victims, including 101-year-old Maggie Magwood. They say he then tried to burn down the house to cover up the crime. Three men are facing murder charges in the shooting death of a 25 year old. The crime happened last month. They are suspects by the names of 24 year old Shadrick LeCount, 23 year old Dwayne Singleton Jr. and 21 year old Montrez Hobson. They are charged with killing Jamie Burton Jr. He was found dead at West Lake Apartments on June 10th. These suspects are being held in the Chatham County Detention Center. In our community report this afternoon, downtown Savannah is home to a variety of hotels, some big, some small, but many people who live in the neighborhood surrounding downtown say they want to stop more hotels from popping up in their backyards. WSAV's Meg Porterfield spoke with the leader of that effort. Members of the Victorian and Streetcar Neighborhood Associations are petitioning to protect places like this plot of land, the old Sears building here on East Henry Street, from being bought up by hotel chains. Leaders of the movement say keeping these developments out of their neighborhoods is crucial to ensure people that live here now can afford to keep living here. 
They're proposing an extension of the current hotel development overlay district to effectively block the construction of major hotels in these historic districts, all the way to Victory Drive. Ryan Madsen, a leader of the movement, wants to keep Savannah local friendly. Madsen says surveys they've conducted of people in the neighborhoods are heavily in favor of the extension as a way to safeguard residents' quality of life. Being able to go to, to the businesses that we rely on that cater to the needs of residents and locals, it's important to be able to sustain that. And um, lo losing that would also mean losing some of the quality of life that we all enjoy in the Victoria neighborhood. The neighborhoods hope to get their petition in front of the Metropolitan Planning Commission next week and say if it's approved, it will then go to City Council. News 3 will continue to follow this story and, of course, update you as we learn more. In downtown Savannah, Meg Porterfield, WSAV News 3, on your side. We have a follow-up now to a story that we first told you about earlier this week. A Brantley County animal shelter reached out to WSAV saying they were in danger of closing because of a lack of funds. Since our story aired, News 3 has learned Max's Animal Shelter in Hoboken has received enough financial donations to stay open for a while longer. So the shelter was set to be sold on July 5th if they did not pay $1,500 in past due taxes. We're told the local community stepped up, donating enough to pay off the debt. Lori Hartman, the co-owner of Maxis Animal Rescue, tells WSAV she's thankful to everyone for helping. While the shelter has benefited from these donations, we do want to mention that they still need thousands of dollars that they will use to give medicine and food and this happens monthly so they want those donations to keep coming and they're much appreciated well if you have kids in school they probably have a dress code yeah but what if your airline had a dress code we're going to find out what some passengers think about that after this you're watching wsav first news at four stay with us